going to talk about this right away. Uh, could I get into the kind of shape that you're in? Is that even possible? What the hell are you doing? Are you doing it every day? Are you eating a special food? Well, thank you for noticing. <laughs> How can you not notice? That's insanity. And it might be a long road. <laughs> <laughs> it would you be know, a long road. Unfortunately, there's no secret to it. You just have to stop eating all of the things you want to yes, eat. Yes, anything that tastes good. And exercise every day till you've lost the will to live. <laughs> I'm sick of it. I'm telling you, I'm giving serious consideration to hanging up the six pack. I yeah. think I'm retiring. Yeah. Let I'm me tell you, it's six now. I'm let me tell you, it's this. really nice on the other side. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems, seems comfortable. I have a one cozy. pack. I have an ab back here that <laughs> is floating south rapidly. Uh, Okay, let's talk about this. Uh, Guy Ritchie, what's incredible about this is it's a period piece, but it feels like Guy Ritchie has managed to give it his style, which in, a, in some ways is very modern. Do you understand? It, it, uh, yeah, I don't know if that's, absolutely. That's my take on it, is that he has this ability to do a piece that's taking place hundreds and hundreds of years ago, but you feel like it's that contemporary Guy Ritchie feel. Yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the, I think that's the, at it, its base concept, what's so fantastic about this, which is, this is one of the oldest stories. I mean, people have been telling the King Arthur story for 1,500 years at this point, which is because it's very, very good. But if you're going to retell a story, you need to make it fresh and original and unique. Uh, and Guy just had a really exciting take on how to do that. I mean, the world creation, as you can see in this thing, is massive. I mean, he's created this epic, um, complex world with a huge element of magical realism. But then in the center of it, you have the classic Guy Ritchie, cheeky, lovable lads, you know, sweet talking, fast punching, lovable rogues that guide you through this and, you know, take on this unlikely task, unlikely for them because they're basically just a bunch of degenerates, that they are the ones that have been sort of chosen to come and lead the country and protect it from the evil foe. You know, what's interesting too is that the story t starts out when you are not king, which I think is, the, so you get to actually see you make this transition from a more humble place, which right. I think, if I think from, a, from a standpoint of building a character, that would be kind of cool. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you meet him and he's a pimp. No, I'm joking. He's not a pimp. <laughs> I, I actually, and now I need to make this clear, he's definitely not a pimp. He just lives in a brothel. But he, uh, you know, that was one of the things that Guy was so uh, specific on, that We've seen the version of King Arthur before where he's the noble man who goes on the noble quest to become the noble king. And we thought, that's great, but it doesn't feel very fresh and we've seen it before. So the sort of the genesis of, of this character is, in, in this incarnation, is he's grown up in abject poverty, but he's a survivor. So to put that in a modern context, we decided to make him like a street kid, or I say we, that was rather grand of me, uh, Guy and uh, the producers and Joby, the writer, and everyone made that decision. I just got paid later to come in. But yeah. <laughs> Chillingly but, honest. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so we meet him and he's this sort of street guy who is actually doing pretty well for himself. And so when the call to action comes in this unlikely destiny gets presented to him, his reaction is, you know what, actually, you can keep it, because I'm doing very well for myself yeah. as it is, thank you very much. But then, of course, nothing's that simple, and he has to, he gets convinced that it's, you know, it's a destiny he can't deny, and he has to go off and, you know, save the day. All right, we have time for uh, questions, I believe, and let's see who we got here. Always just, ah, there we go. Oh. Fresh from his role on Hamilton. Yeah. You know what? I was going to wear just that today. I'm so <laughs> glad I didn't. I we'd know. Have, we'd have looked like a couple of dickheads. <laughs> I, I am not nearly masculine enough to be in the same room as you in this outfit. Can I just oh, say? Oh, stop it. <laughs> you look handsome. No, Thank uh, you. the first role that I ever played on stage in third grade was young Arthur in a production of Camelot. So you can't tell looking at me, but I, uh, I wanted to know how you prepared for such a legendary, iconic role. I honestly tried not to think about it. You can really psych yourself out um, taking on this, the, the perceived significance of a role. And so the mandate here was to invent something fresh and original and new. And so I, I just... 
I, I took the lead from Guy and Lionel, we're Grandma producer, and, uh, and Joby who wrote the script, uh, you know, with what they were going for and tried to understand that and then just inject as much of my own flavor into it as possible. So uh, I really didn't take on the sort of her historic significance of the role because I thought if I did, I would just be afraid to get out of bed in the morning. Right. Well, that is the time we have. I want to thank you so much. Let's get it up it? for Charlie. That is it. I can't Charlie Hunnam. From LA. Yeah, I do as I'm told. I do as I'm told. They put a Warner Brothers chip in my brain, and I do as I'm effing told. Thank you, Charlie. Twenty-four, two thousand seventeen. I hope you enjoy it, fellas.